It's time for more Manifesting Original Rich Bitch Experiences. Each week, we're talking travel, wellness, and millennial musings with a level of refinement. What level? It fucking depends. I'm your host, Ava Bilkey. Welcome back to The More Pod. This week, I found myself having a string of bad days. And to state the obvious, bad days suck. They suck. They're absolutely no fun. Obviously. While I understand that we all have bad days, right? The best of us have bad days. It's part of being human. I do think that something that starts to happen, at least for me, when I'm having a bad day is I start to spiral about it. I have a spiral about the fact that I'm having a bad day. And this typically looks something like being really frustrated with myself about the fact that I'm not feeling so great and telling myself that I feel like shit and wondering what I've done to have a bad day. This spiral just compounds everything. There's nothing helpful about spiraling on having a bad day. And so after about one and a half bad days this week, I was like, you know what, Ava, we need to do something about this. The spiral isn't enjoyable. The bad days aren't enjoyable. And I really believe that we have a lot of ownership in the way that we feel and the way we move about our days. Yes, there are external factors. Yes, there are external circumstances. But a lot of it does come down to how we choose to view those circumstances and factors and the choices we make that really sort of layer upon one another. And so while I do think it's really important that we sit in and feel our bad days because bad days give context and they give more meaning to the good days, I do think that after a little bit of having a bad day, it's time to turn it around. And so I figured we could talk about how to do that. And I also think that it's important to realize that when I'm having a bad day, when you're having a bad day, we remember that we're not alone. This happens to all of us. So I want this episode to be a reminder, one, that if you are having a bad day, or a bad week, or a bad season even, you're not alone. And also, I want to package up all of the things that I found helpful in turning the days around. And so I want this to be a resource for the next time you do have a bad day, a resource for some of the steps we can take to really stop the spiral. So with that, let's just get into it. I've got 12 ways we can turn around a bad day. First and foremost, we have to take inventory. We have to assess the situation here and really figure out what led to this bad day. This will help us really understand how we can flip the script and make the next day a better one. So when I think about what kind of set me off, this week with the bad days, I was temporarily displaced from my condo for construction purposes. So the street that I live on has been remodeled, if you will, for the last several months. And this week there was two final layers of asphalt being laid on the road. And if you've ever been around asphalt, you know that one, it's super toxic. And two, it smells terrible. And for me, it's like the <laughs> the direct flight right to a migraine. So there were four days where I couldn't access my street. I couldn't drive on it. And I also couldn't open the windows or anything because asphalt was being poured. So my mother was kind enough to let me 
come over and camp out at her house for a few days. And this is really what set off the bad days, if I'm being honest. It's nothing about my mother. I love my mother. Shout out, mom. I know you're listening. And I felt really grateful that I did have somewhere to go. But I think being picked up and displaced, put into a totally different environment, you know, I'm out of my routine, my eating habits, my sleeping habits, my exercise habits, everything is jumbled up. And I think one of those things alone is enough to set off a bad day. And so when you have a situation where everything is kind of shaken up, we'll just say I'm not surprised that I started not feeling so great. The other thing that I think was happening for me at the same time was that the seasons changed. We went from hot girl summer to sad girl fall in 24 hours. It was 98 degrees on Monday and 68 degrees by Tuesday. I mean, it was drastic. If you live somewhere where you have seasonal change, you always know that it's going to happen, right? We anticipate these things. However, we don't exactly know when they're going to happen or how they're going to happen. And sometimes the change of seasons is enough also to send anyone into a spiral. Fall for me has always been a time where I'm not into it. I really don't like it. I can't give you one particular reason why, but I've lived enough falls to know that it's also a time where I need to pay more attention to myself, observe how I'm feeling and what I'm doing and how I'm moving through my days because it's a season for me where I go from good to bad real fast. So this was sort of the results of my inventory, right? Being displaced, having every routine kind of out the window, and also just having this seasonal change, that's what I knew was going on for me. And knowing what changed, I was able to figure out what elements of my day or my situation or my my routine I could play with to try to bring things back into balance. So after we take the inventory, there's going to be a lot of things that we can do. Second, I think it's important to immediately find gratitude, have gratitude for something. And this is really looking for mining for the gems, right? So when you feel like you are in a negative place, it's looking for the positive. What is it? For me, it was gratitude for my mom and the fact that she was welcoming me into her home, giving me a place to stay where this construction was taking place, where I didn't have to be exposed to the chemicals and the disruptions and noise. I was so, so grateful for that. And so I wrote that down. And then from there, I just asked myself, what else? And what else? And what else? And so making a list of things that you're grateful for, even when you're having a bad day, is a great way to change the mental story about what's happening because the things that we focus on are magnified. And if I'm sitting around telling myself how shitty I'm feeling and what a bad day I'm having all day long, there's not going to be any space left in my brain to be like, oh, but also I'm really grateful for this or this thing just happened and that was really cool. And so Finding things to be grateful for, even when you don't feel like it, is a really great way to start turning around a bad day. Third, move your body. And if you roll your eyes, as I'm saying this, I get it, you know, because when you're having a bad day, sometimes the last thing that you want to do is like go exercise, right? (laughs) It's almost triggering and kind of comical, but it doesn't have to be like a full exercise. Moving your body, the point is literally just to start moving around the energy. So you could be dancing in the kitchen. You could be using a foam roller. You could be going for a walk around the block. You could be doing a workout class. 
any sort of movement to just start moving around that stagnant negative energy in your body is a great next step. And as much as you resist it, because I know I do, I'm like, walking around the block is not going to make me fucking feel better. Guess what, bitch? It did. Okay. And it does. And it continues to. So moving your body is so incredibly important to turning around this bad day, stopping the spiral, just move in any way that feels good to you. Fourth, we've got to drink some water. We've got to drink some water. And hydrating is never not the answer. Even if you're someone who's well hydrated, you could probably use another sip of water, another glass of water, another jug of water, one of those big fucking, another Stanley cup. Drinking water is so incredibly obvious, but it's also, again, it's one of these things when we're feeling shitty and we're spiraling and we're having a bad day, it's probably not the first thing we're thinking about. And when I was halfway through my series of bad days this week, I realized that I wasn't drinking water. I had instead decided to really zone out and or zone in rather to work. And a whole day went by. I was on my laptop and I didn't even have a sip of water. It was crazy. So a lot of this is really going back to the basics. There is a level of freedom in the basics, which I think can be frustrating sometimes because I like to tend to lean towards like, well, what is something really cool or crazy or unique that I could do to feel better? And it's like, you know, if you're having a bad day, you don't really need unique and crazy and cool. You just need the basics. So we've got to drink our water. Fifth, we also have to eat something. And I don't even care if it's something healthy. Obviously, nourishing our bodies is super important. And when we're having a bad day, we still need food. We still need nutrients. We still need that fuel. But I also think that there's something sort of nice to leaning into a moment (laughs) of emotional eating when you're not feeling good. I'm sorry. I do. I think it's great. You know, like if you're feeling bad and you really just want a donut, go have a donut. You're having a bad day. You deserve it. And this is where I break with all the nutritionists of the world, right? Because they're probably say like, no, that's going to make you feel worse because the sugar makes you depressed, whatever. I think there's enough short-term gain from emotional eating that why not? Why not? So eat something. Whether you decide to have a healthy salad, a nutrient-dense piece of steak, or a donut, just eat something you'll start to turn the day around. The sixth thing we can do to turn around a bad day is to go outside, even if it's just for 10 minutes, because nature heals. Nature absolutely heals fresh air. There's something about it. You just can't beat it. And when I was in the middle of, you know, my sad girl fall moment, I didn't want to go outside the weather had changed. You know, I packed a bag for my mom's house and I'm not going to lie to you. I packed three different bikinis because when I packed, it was 98 degrees and I was fully looking forward to sitting outside in my swimsuit, getting a little last minute vitamin D. And that absolutely did not happen. And as a result, I also didn't have fall clothes, you know? And so I didn't want to go outside and I didn't go outside and I paid for it. This is one of the areas that I probably need to work on most going outside, not just when it's nice out, not just when it's a sunny day with blue skies and poolside weather, but going outside every day because it does a lot for the nervous system. It does a lot for our internal clocks, you know, our rhythms. So 
dress for the weather and go. Again, even if you're just outside for five minutes, 10 minutes, you're doing a walk around the block, it's going to feel a lot better than sitting inside all day in a spiral about the fact that you're not having a very good day. Number seven, we're going to take a shower. I'm going to take a shower. You might take a bath depending on if you're team shower or team bath, but water is, again, water is part of nature and nature is healing. So I love to take a very long shower. I have been known to take a 30 minute shower and hell, sometimes I might be in the shower for an hour. Okay. I know it's a lot of water, but don't come for me because I need those showers. There's something about taking a shower, washing away all of the negative energy, all the bad mood, all the weird vibes. You're just washing it down the drain. It really is a moment of just having some alone time to decompress from everything. And again, I love the shower because I have a thing about, you know, bathing in, in dirt. I don't like that. I don't like a bath, but the bath, if you're a bath girly, that will get you to the same destination. So taking a shower or taking a bath is a great thing to do when you're like, man, I just need to, I just need to turn around this bad day. What can I do? Take a shower. Number eight, we've got to stimulate the mind. We've got to stimulate the mind, especially if you're someone that likes to ruminate. You're doing the mental thing about, I feel so shitty. I'm having a bad day. Why am I having a bad day? What's wrong with me? I shouldn't be having a bad day. You know, you need to stimulate the mind with some healthy form of entertainment. It could be a podcast. It could be a book. It could be a TV series. When I was having bad days, plural, <laughs> when I was having bad days this week, I watched a couple things. Um, I checked out the new Netflix series about the blue zones and how to live to be 100. Learned a lot about some cute old ladies in Japan who garden every day and some cute old ladies in, and old men actually. There are some old men in Italy who were chilling. You know, it was educational. I learned something. The subject matter was relatively positive, you know, how to extend your lifespan. And that was nice. I also caught up on a couple of episodes of the Jay Shetty podcast. So it's just doing something to stimulate your mind and really get off of those negative thoughts. You know, I also realized that when I wasn't feeling good, I didn't have a book with me. I had just finished reading a book and I didn't have a current book. So I didn't pack one. I didn't bring one to my mom's house. And I really missed that. When I'm in the routine of reading a book, I feel like, again, it's just something to take my mind down a new path. And not having the book actually helped me realize that reading before bed really helps me fall asleep. And so the absence of having a book to read before bed, I think also was kind of thrown off my whole routine. And so <laughs> I ordered a new book real fast because we're turning things around here. Days are getting better. Um, and so one of the things I'm adding back to my routine is having a book to read before bed. So stimulating the mind in some way with some healthy form of entertainment is helpful when you're trying to turn around a bad day. Nine, we're going to talk to someone. It could be a friend. It could be a family member. It could be a stranger. It could be a cashier at Whole Foods. Talking to someone is going to make you feel better. And you don't have to tell them. Like It doesn't have to be a confessional about the fact that you're not feeling good. I'm literally talking about just having conversation with another human being. I think what happens when we talk to other people is we get those reminder moments that we aren't alone. We all have so many shared experiences, yet I think it's so easy to start to feel like we're in isolation, like we're alone, like we're the only ones who think the things we do, who feel the ways we do. And it's simply not true. It's simply not true. And talking to someone 
is one of the fastest ways to realize that we're all in this together, we're all connected, and we're not alone. So I texted a couple of my friends. I was like, yo, I'm hella depressed. (laughs) Things are not cute today. And it turns out all three of us were kind of just in a little bit of a funk for different reasons, not feeling well, having a bad day. And I'm not going to lie. Like it felt kind of good, you know, to some extent, misery loves company, but it wasn't like that. It wasn't like we were all focused on the negative. It's really just more of a supportive thing. Realizing that we are having this shared experience. It's like, yeah, like we're like, what's the astrology? Things are weird. Um, but just chatting, chatting makes it feel better. And this is another one where again, it's like sometimes when you feel like you're not in a good mood, it's maybe the last thing you want to do. You don't want to exercise, you don't want to talk to anybody, but guess what? It helps. It really, really helps. Number 10, we've got to get more sleep. When you're having a bad day, sleep is critical. Whether you choose to go to bed early or sleep in late, doesn't really matter, whichever works for your schedule. But I'm a firm believer that sleep solves like 99% of the world's problems. You just need to sleep more. Sleep really helps our physical, our mental, our emotional states. And when I'm running on no sleep, I think the chances of me having a bad day are probably like 10x, 10 times higher chance that I'm going to have a bad day if I haven't slept. Because when I don't sleep well, I don't handle things well. I don't view things well. I don't make good eating choices, drinking choices, you know. Sleep is definitely a critical factor. And you know, I wasn't sleeping very well this week. I wasn't in my normal bed. I was in a comfortable place, but it wasn't my normal bed. It wasn't my normal routine. So I was like, oh, things got a little, a little iffy and I wasn't exercising. So I wasn't sleeping. A lot of these habits actually sort of compound. And I guess in some ways that's good because even if you just pick one or two or three things to really start to turn your day around, you're going to be impacting more areas than you think you are. So that's the good news here. Number 11, give yourself a pep talk. This is really all about self-talk. When you're having a bad day, it's really easy to dwell on the negative. And self-talk and specifically positive self-talk is a really great way to change the storyline. I had to give myself a pretty big pep talk. Some of the things that I like to remind myself of when I'm experiencing a time frame where I'm just not feeling super great. First and foremost, I like to remind myself that I have to just accept the reality of the moment. And that's as simple as just putting it on the table. I'm feeling like this, accepting the moment. And shortly after that, reminding myself that nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. No experience, no emotion, no relationship, no work arrangement, weather pattern, nothing lasts forever. And so when you're in a darker time, it's helpful to remember this. Whatever you're feeling in the moment is not going to last forever because nothing does. After that, it's typically, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Because again, we have to go through these phases where we're feeling good, we're feeling not good, we're feeling good, we're feeling not good. That's just the reality of life. And reminding myself that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be for me feels comforting and trusting that there's a reason, a lesson that I'm learning. I'm preparing myself for a big leap or just preparing myself for a better day. Another one is telling myself that I'm doing the best that I can. And obviously this has to be true, right? So if you find yourself having a bad day and you are putting some energy towards turning it around, even if it's just one, one thing, you've done one thing, you've gone outside for five minutes, reminding yourself, telling yourself that you're doing the best that you can is really around just having grace, being more gentle with yourself. It's the opposite of being like, 
why am I having a bad day? What's wrong with me? How did I get here? Right? I'm doing the best I can is really what (laughs) cancels that one out. And when it's true, when you are doing the best that you can, I also find this one really helpful and comforting. So your pep talk might look different and that's great, but these are some of the things that I find helpful when I'm having a bad day. Some of the things I'll tell myself, remind myself of, journal on, but the self-talk is definitely an area where you'll find that some of the spiral is self-induced. Sometimes I think we like to sit in moments of just feeling like shit and piling things on. But at some point, we've got to keep it moving. We've got to keep it moving. And the positive self-talk here, the pep talk, is a really powerful way to turn around a bad day. And 12, last and certainly not least, the 12th thing we can do to turn around a bad day is to make a future plan. And this one's one of my favorites. Making a plan for the future gives you something to look forward to. I think we all need this all the time. It could be as small as planning to give yourself a manicure later in the day. It could be as big and dramatic as booking your next trip, you know, sliding scale, adjust as necessary (laughs) based on how bad, how bad it's getting, but making yourself a plan for the future that you can look forward to a dinner reservation, uh, a walk with a friend, again, a trip who doesn't love booking a trip. I know I love it. Making a plan for the future is a really helpful way to start moving past having a bad day. And what I did for myself was I placed an order for a take and bake gluten-free pizza. Okay. I had received an email from this bakery that I like that makes all gluten-free goodies. And they had some pizza offer, take and bake pizza. I ordered one so random, very, very fucking random. But I was like, I think this is a future plan that I need right now to have something to look forward to. So on a random Sunday, a couple weeks from now, or maybe it's next week, I'll have to check. I get to go pick up my pre-ordered gluten-free pepperoni pizza and bake it at home. Okay. It's something to look forward to. It also helped me realize that The plot of my life story is getting pretty boring. That's what we're looking forward to. Take and bake gluten-free pizza. I mean, it's cute, but it's not that cute. So this just gave me more information, you know, and making this future plan, it helped me realize that I want to be making bigger future plans. I've got my short-term pizza to look forward to. And I also have information around what I could do next to give myself greater things to look forward to. Making a future plan is always a good idea. If you've heard someone say like, you've got to have something on the calendar to look forward to, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's exactly what I'm talking about here. So there you have it. These are 12 things that you can do to turn around a bad day. I'm feeling better. I've done quite a few of these things. There's more that I can do, but I'm doing the best that I can. And everyone has bad days. So it's okay. As I think about it now, more than anything, bad days are truly just information. And they can help us course correct in using a bad day to guide us back to a path where we can be more aligned, in some ways, bad days are really opportunities to be more of who we are. And that's pretty cute because that's what this podcast is all about. Be more you. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you are having a bad day, know that you're not alone. If you're having a good day, know that this is here for you when you need it. 
as a resource. And we'll leave it at that. Let's transition into this week's Love It or Leave It. So this is a series where I share the things that I'm loving that I would like to recommend that you try out. And I also share the things that I'm not loving and leaving behind. And so what I'm loving this week is I tried a new service. I tried a new service. It's called AccuGlow Facial Rejuvenation. Apparently AccuGlow is a thing. It's becoming a thing. And it's a combination of acupuncture and gua sha. This service is all focused on the face. So it's acupuncture of the face and facial gua sha. This combination, holy shit, it was incredible. My acupuncturist, Jala Shri, she's amazing. I love her. She just started adding the service to her books. And so obviously I needed to try it. I don't know. There's just something about having somebody else touch your face. It feels so good. Like I have a gua sha stone at home. I don't use it very often. And when I do use it, it's fine. But when she used it on me, it was like amazing. It was so good. It really helped to relieve the tension that I carry in my neck. That's a big thing for me. Like I'm always clenching my jaws and I'm always just like tensed up, like gritting from the inside out for some reason. And I can't control it. It's involuntary, obviously, but this AccuGlow treatment really helped to loosen up my neck and my jawline. And I had cheekbones. I walked out of there with cheekbones. Like I felt so snatched. I was glowing. I felt good. I was relaxed. This service was a 10 out of 10. Highly recommend it. Facial acupuncture, facial gua sha together, such a vibe. So love, 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 love. What I'm leaving this week though is people who take the time to leave negative comments on the internet. And this is not new. This has always been a thing obviously, but I feel like I'm realizing or I'm noticing more of it lately. I don't know if you feel this way. Has there been a rise in negativity on the internet? Perhaps. I notice this more often on YouTube, which is interesting. So the more pod hasn't hit the critical mass yet where, (laughs) where I am a frequent daily recipient of internet hate, but on occasion I've got, you know, a YouTube short that pops off and it never fails. It never fails on YouTube. There's always a man without a profile picture who takes time out of his day to write me a paragraph long hate comment. And I'm just not here for it. If you don't have a profile picture on the internet, your comment is not valid. I'm sorry, it's not. Show your fucking face if you want to say that to me, you know? And in the past, I may have been tempted to leave the comment up because, you know, in some ways, the engagement is engagement. So if you're taking the time to comment on my videos, you're telling the algorithm that my video is engagement worthy. You're actually helping my distribution. That's the funny thing. However, now I'm very much in a camp of thinking that it's better to delete the hate comments and it's better to delete the hate comments because there's a lot of group think that goes on on the internet. And so if one gremlin sees a comment from another gremlin and gets really encouraged to also leave a gremlin comment, you know, you're kind of creating a space where you're saying that it's fine to spread negative energy on your content. And for me personally, I'm not okay with that. So now I'm very much in a place where I'm deleting negative comments. There's no room for negativity. 
And this is a personal preference, obviously. If you want to leave your comments for engagement, that's fine. But I would encourage you to consider deleting negative comments that you receive because I think it's sending a, a clearer message that you're not here for it. Mm -mm. And so I'm leaving the internet hate behind. And again, I've worked in this industry for 13 years. And so I fully understand that it's always been a thing. But I don't know. I just, I've noticed a little uptick in negative comments. I don't know about you, but I'm in a place where I'm leaving them so far behind that I'm deleting the negativity from my life. I encourage you to do the same. And that's on that. So we are loving taking the initiative to turn around a bad day. We're leaving the bad days behind. We are loving AccuGlow facial rejuvenation services. Hell yes, self-love. We are leaving internet trolls. I think that's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for spending time with me and the podcast. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode, if you found it helpful, let me know by leaving a review and share the podcast with a friend. If you have someone in your life who is also on the journey to becoming more of who they truly are, they're looking for alignment, they're looking for inspiration, they're looking for conversations around travel and lifestyle topics, let them know about the more pod. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. And have a good day. Listen to the more pod every Wednesday as I share the things that make me more me and discover a thing or two to make you more you.